So, who wants a Pepsi? What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here, back at it again. And by now most of us are aware that the Rolex Pepsi GMT stole the headlines at this year's Fossil World, and Tudor's Pepsi GMT also benefited from all the Rolex attention. So, what if we want a Rolex Pepsi? Good luck. For example, at one of the ADs here in LA, there is a 450 person wait list, and that's because they have one model that came in, and there are 300 people that have either called in or stopped in to put their name on that wait list. But they also have 150 regular Rolex customers, and it's almost like a lotto pick. They will randomly pick one of their Rolex VIPs and offer them the first crack at that watch. But as Clive said, This Pepsi sold for almost $22,000. Wow. On one of his shows, if we have the money and we don't have the patience, we can spend $22,000 on that watch. That retails for $9,200. And so while looking into a pre-owned Pepsi isn't anything new, and while the hunt for our next great pre-owned watch is a lot of fun, the due diligence that goes into that process and or finding an independent dealer, not so much. In fact, it's the least fun part of the process. It just takes up so much of our time and we're paranoid. And we should be, especially if we're going to spend $9,000 on a watch. And while there are a lot of great independent dealers, there are more not so great <coughs> independent dealers. Their main job is to find us that rare watch that fits within our budget and can be verified as authentic. They don't really need to go anything beyond that, even though we would love to know every bit of history and information about that pre-owned watch. Just like we would if we were to buy a used car. We want to know how many owners it had. Was it involved in any accidents? Enter, wait for it, the luxury department store Bloomingdale's, which I think can be our greatest source for a pre-owned Rolex. One of the first things that comes to mind is if Bloomingdale's carries a pre-owned Rolex, it has to be more expensive than anywhere else carrying that same model. But that would be an assumption, and we already know how Samuel Jackson feels about that. So you're assuming I won't shoot your sorry ass, and everyone knows when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you, an assumption. And here is the Rolex Pepsi GMT that I came across in Bloomingdale's. Oh, there's an old Pepsi. Sure, I can take it. This one. This is $9,500. $9,500? That's right. And then you get the beer money, seven fifty. This is 40 mil. Mm -hmm. So what is your source? How do we know what has been done to this Everything watch? is original. We have, you get a certificate, you see? They come with a certificate. Oh, this is all That's original? Right. Or new original? Or Everything original? is original. So there has been, not has been any alterations done to this? No. I mean, it's everything like a brand new, you're buying, it's certified. They give you a certificate for one year warranty on it. And then that would mean it's a third-party warranty, You're not or not the Rolex. It's gonna be the company that we are selling it to you. We give you the phone number, everything. You call, you know. I see. Yeah, they're, they're part of the Rolex. Did you say the warranty is a part of Rolex? They're so if we price this model with the same model on other websites, even at ninety-five hundred dollars, we can see that it's priced competitively. And when it goes on sale for eighty-seven hundred dollars, it's even priced less. But the, the best part of buying a pre-owned Rolex from Bloomingdale's is their certificate of information that we receive as a buyer. And let's take a look at what I mean. What year, what year is this? I tell you what year is that. I think that is 94. That book of information was loaded with information that I couldn't put on camera because it had some sensitive information such as the serial numbers. But he showed me that book and it was just an incredible, incredible wealth of information. That GMT, for example, only had one owner. Um, there was another date just in there that had two owners, another Rolex that had three owners. This is the kind of information we would love to have. I mean, it was just chock full of information. And that's important because... Um, for those of who, of us who don't know, 
Um, whenever we send in a Rolex for whatever reason, for a dial, for a service, it comes back with a new warranty. So the date of that warranty begins then. And that can be a little bit of a tricky selling point for some shady sellers who will say, well, there's six months left on a warranty. And that may be true for what it was just serviced for, but it doesn't mean that that watch is only six months old. So that's something that we need to be aware of. And the information that comes with those Rolexes has this kind of information of what exactly is left on that warranty and why. It has exact reason that the watch was uh, sent in for when it was sent back. It makes me feel very comfortable if I was to spend that kind of a money uh, on a pre-owned watch. That level of information on a pre-owned Rolex is information that I have never ever seen from any pre-owned Rolex from any seller. I mean, that is the dream kind of information that at least I would want on knowing about a pre-owned Rolex. I mean, if we were to ask an independent dealer how many owners had this watch, they would probably tell us uh, they have no way of getting that kind of information. But we now know that we can get that kind of information from Bloomingdale's. And their prices are so competitive with everyone else, and that's because of their purchasing power. They can certainly afford to buy things in cash and in bulk because it is a chain store. And those that purchasing power is reflective in their competitive prices. Another advantage of buying a Rolex from Bloomingdale's is their return policy. So for example, if we were to send our watch six months down the line, a year down the line, or or for whatever reason, it comes back with information that doesn't match up with the checklist that we received. I'm pretty sure we could get our money back from Bloomingdale's because they are so worried about their reputation. They can't afford to be known as selling us something that's possibly fake or with less than original that doesn't match up with as advertised versus an independent dealer where if we tried the same thing a year, six months down the line, we would never be able to get our money back from him because he also has to go to his source where he got to watch for us. There is another reason as well. That independent dealer may not always be around. Maybe he quits, he retires, he wants to do something else. We're not able to locate him. Whereas Bloomingdale's, a major department store, will always be around. And there are consequences for a department store selling us something that does not match up with their selling points. And that makes it invaluable to me and it makes me feel a lot more secure. If there is one limitation for buying a Rolex from Bloomingdale's, it would be the inability to make special requests. In other words, we cannot ask Bloomingdale's to locate a specific Rolex for us. We are limited to the Rolex models they already carry in their stores. However, because each store carries different models, it is possible for them to locate a certain model for us in another store if it's already in their inventory. And I can understand this because they've already spent a lot of time and their money doing their due diligence on every single pre-owned Rolex, raising the bar on the once boring industry standard of 100% Rolex certified. We would never buy a used car without knowing its complete history. And that's what we've been doing on pre-owned Rolexes. We've been buying an incomplete history until now. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you the next time. So who wants a Pepsi? So while the, so while the 16700 uses the dirt, so while the 1670 uses the dirty 135, 3135. If there is one limitation for buying. So you want to pre own Pepsi. So you want to use Pepsi. So you want to pre own. Why do we say used cars but pre owned watches?